Okay, so now it's time to learn about the output module. You've got something cool, it's in your render queue, you've got great settings. If you don't, check that out, you know, or just go to best settings. I mean, that's what I always do. I'm pretty lazy. Time to use the output module. Same with the render settings. You can use this little twirly down here to uh, pick your module. You know, these are all pretty cool, and I've built a couple of custom ones in here. You know, it happens. People do it. I do it all the time click on the word lossless or whatever the word is here and it's going to open up the fancy pants settings you always work from the top of the menu down so starting here on main options what's up at the top what format is it going to be in quicktime photoshop sequence these are image sequences these are all variations on the mpeg this is an mp3 so just audio more sequences h264 h264 blu-ray this is going to be what youtube turns your stuff into so if you're going right to youtube go right to there uh, you know, all these great things. In general, I'm on a Mac, so I stick with QuickTime usually. Um, Post-render action, though, this is not as important as format. I mean, this will, you know, import it back into your uh, back into your comp. You can import and replace the comp with it. You can set a proxy, all that fun stuff. If you're just exporting it out of After Effects, don't worry about it. You know, include project link is pretty good. I mean, if you want to keep things more organized, you know, include some XMP data. You know, those are those are fancy pants things for fancy pants people. And usually, at the end of the day, if you if you don't know you need them, you don't need them. So that's that's a general rule. If you're, if you're thinking ever, oh, I don't know what that is. Do I need it? I don't know. Do you need it? Is that a thing you know you need? Not usually. I mean, things are pretty cut and dry around here. So, next thing, you want some video output? No. Yes. Click that box. What is in this box though? is going to depend on what you chose up here. So different formats, you'll see, have different things going on when it comes to uh, when it comes to what it can offer you, you know? So like for for an AFE, you can only have audio, you know? For QuickTime and video output, you know, you get the whole RGB, RGB and alpha, you get everything. Okay? If you have an MPEG-2, you can't have RGB and alpha together at the same time. You just can't. I'm sorry. You just can't have it. So let's go through this for quick time. It's pretty versatile. You have the channels, which are the color channels. RGB means color, um, so visual information. Alpha means uh, whether you're exporting this as a, like an alpha mat, which is basically going to say, is it transparent, is it not transparent, and how much for each pixel. Um, RGB plus alpha is both of those information. So what color is each pixel and how see-through or not see through is that pixel for every pixel so that's what that means depth uh, if you're on RBG plus alpha you have to be on that but you know you can uh, you can have less colors more colors just a bunch of gray colors so that is the the color how deep the color is and then you can get into are they straight colors are they matted colors um, generally you want to be uh, be here on pre-multiplied um, now, you can also resize this. If you saw in the render settings, you can export things that are like half or a quarter size. You can again go in here and resize it to things. Now, you want to probably lock aspect ratio, or maybe not. I mean, it totally depends on what you're going to do with this after. But it has a bunch of presets here that are going to correspond usually to something in your editing software that's going to tell you, okay, we're going to be working with HDV 120, 25 or we're going to be doing DVC Pro HD you know when you pick a standard to work in then you can go through and standardize everything you're working with but in general you don't have to resize if you already started with the footage in the right size but you know you you want to keep your resize quality high usually uh, you can use low if you're just testing it out but high know your presets and don't screw around with it if you're already in the right spot uh, you can also crop it if you need to crop things you can use the region of interest which you can set uh, in the comp but uh, you can crop it down if you need to and it's going to tell you the final size right here so if you're exporting something you're gonna have to cut down to a letterbox or cut off the edges or whatever this is gonna tell you how many pixels so oh, oh I just cut off some pixels uh, and then the next thing is audio quality I usually don't worry about audio quality only because After Effects sucks at audio. So I don't usually uh, get into using audio in After Effects. Sometimes it can provide a worthwhile scratch track, but you know, 
Uh, 48 kilohertz is uh, broadcast standard. Uh, you can go higher if you want. If you really think that's going to help out of After Effects, I don't think so, because After Effects is not good for audio. CS6 might fix that. Okay, fingers crossed. But for right now, audio is not that hot. Only think of it as a scratch track and uh, for use later in other things. If this is your final export, if it's going from After Effects and you're putting it out there, then 48K is where you want to be. 16-bit uh, is fine. And stereo, definitely, unless you want to have that nice mono sound. Oh, oh that's nice and retro. Format options are just going to let you pick the codec. Uh, uncompressed, of course, is the largest file size, highest quality. ACC is pretty dope, too. You know, There's nothing wrong with ACC, and there's nothing wrong with really any of these. But they really just depend on where you're going and what you're doing. So uncompressed, but I use ACC personally. I like it. It gets the job done. Changing these format options, as you can see is changing what's available in here. So some of these format options might only allow mono. Uncompressed allows everything. So that's important to remember too. Now there's one more tab, color management. What's that all about? So you've got video on, color management. Uh, this is where you get to get really deep into color, okay? Now, if you have to manage your color because you're you're going to a broadcast setting or something that won't be able to handle all the colors you're putting out. If this is for the web, you're probably going to be safe. But, you know, if this is going to be played back on a TV, if this is going to be put on local cable access or whatever, you're going to want to think about this kind of thing where you manage your colors. But in general, you won't have to worry about it. This is going to be all you're going to need. And... I know sometimes I go blah 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 about the RGB plus alpha. This is where you can get it. This is where you can send it an alpha channel. And then when you put this into an editing pro uh, program, and you know, this is probably the biggest thing people will use this for, is adding the alpha channel. When you put it into an editing program, then you can put things behind it, and you can still have that, that nice cutout thing with what's going on. So you could do your keying in here and then move it out or whatever, but that's how you do it. That's how you use the output module. And then once you have some cool settings going on, you can go down here, and then you can actually uh, make a template of the thing that you just did. And uh, then you can just type in a name, like custom or whatever, and click save and call it a day. Uh, and then you can use that again later, if you're going to be using that a lot for your project. And then you can just apply it to uh, all the other things in here. So hopefully that tells you a little bit more about using the output module and using the render queue. When you're good to go, hit render, and... Uh, you know, check out the other videos in the series. Hopefully this helps you out. I'm Evan Abrams, and thanks a lot for watching.